Me, Tom, let's talk about uh, yesterday's uh, session with Fed Chair Jay Powell because he acknowledged the economy is strengthening but said now is not the time to talk about tapering despite the pickup in inflationary pressure. Steve Weisman uh, joins us now with more. It was always, it's always good to see when they call on you, Steve. We all love that. You know that? <laughs> well, I'm, I, I hope I fulfill all of your hopes and aspirations, uh, Andrew, with my question. But, you know, Powell said it's not time to talk about tapering, but we're going to talk about it anyway. While the Fed statement and Fed chair Jay Powell in his press conference upgraded the U.S. economy and downgraded, by the way, the risks from the pandemic, both held rock steady in suggesting that no change was coming anytime soon to the Fed's very easy monetary policy. Asked if it was time to reduce the monthly asset purchases that the Fed makes in order to keep interest rates down, Powell said this. It is not time yet. Uh, we've said that we would let the public know when it is time to have that conversation. And we'd said we'd do that well in advance of any actual decision to taper our asset purchases, and we will do so. In the meantime, we'll be monitoring progress toward our goals. Still, Fed observers on the street are talking about tapering and after the meeting look to be centered on this possible timeline for the Fed to act. This is a loose timeline that I gathered both from our Fed survey and from commentary after the meeting. June or July, the Fed will publicly tell us it's discussing tapering, perhaps. September, October, the Fed would announce that it's going to taper. And in January, there's a lot of consensus around this, the Fed would actually begin to reduce its $120 billion in asset purchases. On that schedule, though, the Fed will still be buying tens of billion dollars of assets, treasuries and mortgages, this time next year. Powell continues to insist high inflation numbers are likely temporary. CNBC has been tracking a high-frequency inflation data series that uses prices scraped from the web on a weekly basis, and it is up sharply. Take a look. Price stats inflation data from State Street Insights running at an annual rate of 3.6 percent in the second half of April, the highest going back to September 2011. Driven substantially by high fuel costs, it will tell you that the monthly rate has cooled down a bit. These are the kind of hot inflation numbers the Fed is promising to look straight through as it keeps policy unchanged for the rest of the year. And that right now is how markets are betting, Andrew. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.